started in uh, the uh, book of John, of course, chapter uh, one, and then what he was talking about was fellowship. Okay, uh, we're going to out. We're outlining. What I'm outlining is how this movement has happened. In this, you have to remember, this is a letter, a general letter. He's writing this to the church in Ephesus. We need to stay focused that he's writing to Ephesus and 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 to people in that day. And this is John writing uh, because there's a lot of commentators who'll just turn around and say he's written to the tribulation people. What's John doing? <laughs> he's writing to people. Okay. And we'll get consumed with these things. And, uh, and then uh, I know one commentator started to put down that this was a salvation call. He told you that in the beginning. So he says, you need fellowship. That's the one thing we do. What did, what did God learn? He said, it's not good to be alone. How many people here have learned that themselves? It's not good to be alone. It's not that great. I like being with people. People, you know, just to have somebody to, to talk to is good. Why do you think people started buying dogs? You got dogs in your house, right? What do you do? You, how many people talk to their dog? You're reasoning with a dog, uh, but you need something because you're alone. Amen. <laughs> okay, Adrian, I understand. I'm just saying. <laughs> now she's mad at me. That's it. Put on the dogs. <laughs> You know why we communicate with these type of animals? They're the closest spiritually to us. You don't realize that. That's why they're in your house. Get some dogs. Imagine that one. Hey, I got a donkey in my house. Why? Well, you know, I needed a jackass to talk to. <laughs> Amen. Amen. That's good. <laughs> so he fell Fellowship is, uh, is real big, and he's trying to tell you that truly, now think about this, he says truly our fellowship is with the Lord, Jesus Christ. Why? Well, when we get together here, this is our fellowship, we get together, we, what do we talk about? Jesus Christ. And truly our fellowship is with Jesus Christ. And uh, that's our fellowship, it's with Jesus Christ, he's in the midst. And then in the second chapter, he told you how to get into Jesus Christ. What's that? You need an advocate. You need somebody. And what did it say? He died. It said he was the propitiation. I'm looking right at the same page. She knows that word, right? Yes. Amen. You know? Amen. 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 She's got about three, three great answers. I can see her at the judgment seat of Christ. The Lord turns around and says, hey, uh, eh, Miss Adrian, uh, what about this? So two! Two. <laughs> Amen. So uh, he, he starts to tell in chapter 2, you need a, an attorney for you. You need an advocate. Uh, you need somebody that's, uh, that, that's done something for you, that's going to speak for you. And, of course, that's Jesus Christ. And he starts to tell him, you want to grow in your faith. Uh, and he says what? He says, if you love me, you obey my what? Commandments. That's how you show you love them. Uh, you love somebody, you, you, you obey their, and you obey God's commandments. It tells you you love them uh, with that. And, and of course, you have to understand, he's not making bad commandments. Don't think you have to obey somebody out there in the world that's going to give you rotten commandments right. and, and just because you want to love the person. Okay? Be, remember what you're doing. Uh, he says uh, these, these things help you to do what? To know that you know him. When you obey his commandments, it helps you to know him. And then he starts to go uh, into... <laughs> Sorry. That's okay. <laughs> and then he starts to uh, get into what we call a categorizing, I would say it's categorizing spiritual growth. Uh, when you're first uh, saved, uh, you are born again. You're born, right? Born again, just like born when you're a baby. Born again, and what born again, you're a what, babe, in Christ. You're an infant in Christ, and then you'll move up the line, just like we move up the line. You get to the terrible twos, the threes, and all that stuff, and the person is a little child, a little child. Uh, uh, they, they, they know they're saved, and, and that's about it. They really can't really uh, walk well with the Lord. You know, a, a little child, he, he, has a, he has a different walk about him. Uh, he has uh, problems making decisions. Uh, little children take temper tantrums in their spiritual uh, life. Uh, we see these. 
okay? We see them taking temper tantrums and everything else. Uh, they come up with these new ideas in the church. Um, and uh, they're just starting out. And then comes the young men. And the young men, they know something. They know where to get the truth. They start getting the doctrines of the book. Okay, uh, just so you know, in, in order to have the doctrine of the, book, of the book, you have to have the right book. There are, you cannot get the doctrines out of any modern version. I can sit down and, and uh, sit with you. You will never get them out of any modern version. They're not there. You have to know uh, somewhat of them before you can even go in there. Uh, you're going to have a hard time. Why? Well, if you get the NIV, you've got to take the blood out of the book, and there it is. If you don't have the blood, it's worthless. Amen? And we found that out by saying what? Where's the sin? Where did your sin go? In the earth. Where did Jesus' blood go? On the earth. It had to cleanse all. It got rid of, covered that whole of sin. You imagine just the blood of one man, five pints of blood to take care of the whole earth. Isn't that something? And don't worry, the Lord will take care of the heavens too. That's coming too. It's called burning. Amen. And his blood actually purged the heavens too. And uh, that's brought out, I think it's brought out in uh, uh, Hebrews. So he gives you, uh, he turns around, he says, look, you get to a, a young man, and then, of course, the fathers. How are you going to determine the fathers? Well, the fathers, they've got wisdom now. They know how to apply all this knowledge that's out there, what's going on. They know how to apply it. They're the fathers of the faith. And then, of course, God goes into positions. But uh, these, are, these are the spiritual growth. And how did they get there? In, uh, in chapter 2 and verse 15, he says, and he says what? Love not the world. Love not the world. The world isn't going to take care of you. The world isn't going to uh, help you out with anything. And he tells you, little children, uh, you know what's going to help you not get into the world? Uh, knowing uh, what is the real, real, uh, real spoke, what's really spoken from God and what isn't. He says, there's going to be coming a lot of people around to take you from your walk. And uh, they have the spirit of what? Anti-Christ. Anti-Christ. Not the Antichrist. They're Antichrist. Okay, they're against God. Uh, they, everything that comes out, they, they move against the things he says. And he tells you, he says, look, these guys are going to come along, but you can figure out who's who. Why's that? You have an unction from who? The Holy One. You know, you, you can look forward to somebody. Look, if, if they're saying something to you, what do you do? You've got the book right in your hands. You go what? Right through it. Hey, what you say? You say something, right? See, the problem we have, we major in the minors instead of in the majors. Somebody's preaching the wrong gospel. Or it's, it's, it's half decent over there. But then somebody preaches something like, Sons of God, oh, you got it right. Said, this is crazy. I'm the, oh, I can't deal with this. Look, we got a major in the majors and minor in the minors. You can't be turning around and thinking uh, thinking these things. I, I mean, I, I, I have guys that believe the book that are friends of mine. But I can tell you this. They believe that their local church is actually the body of Christ. And there's many body of Christ that make one uh, whole body, and we know that's not true. We're all parts of the body of Christ. But they believe this, but they're also out there that they, they preach the same gospel and everything. And, uh, and, and you know, I'm not going to throw the guy to the ground just because of that stuff. It's just not worth it. We're all in the same, we, we're in the same fight with him. Amen. And he tells you, he says, these things, but you have an unction. You can figure out what's What's right? You have a due order. God made this Bible, okay? Uh, the first thing you need to know, Jesus is Christ. This is the Christ. The second thing you need to know is the King James is the Bible. And after that, you can go on. But you need those first two things. Amen. And then in the comes the third chapter, and he says he's going to make the makeup of you. What's going to happen? What happened when you were born again? He said, what's that? Behold, what manner of love hath God bestowed upon us that we should be called what? The sons of God. And he tells you there's a difference, people, between the sons of God, the children of God. Sons serve. Children are saved. Amen? Pretty easy. Okay? And uh, just so you know, you're the only church that preaches that here. I, I've gone everywhere. They don't predict that everybody's a son of God. That, that the reason, I don't understand it. It doesn't make sense. You know? Those who are led by the Spirit, they're the sons of God. We can see that not everybody is. Okay? And he says, now, look, he says, when you got saved, here's some things that happened to you. And you, you put inside your body two different uh, personalities there. You have a new man and an old man. And he's trying to tell you to what? Look towards the new man. He doesn't sin. That old man, he's got problems. He's back there. He's that guy you get up in the morning and you go into your uh, bathroom and you look at that guy in the mirror and you say, that's the guy that's ruining my life. Amen. 
How many times, too? And that's what he wasn't to get it. you got two people and you go for the guy. Do the things. Choose life. Choose life. Okay? Don't choose the transgression. Choose life. And then he tells him, he says, how, do you, how, how can I walk? He says, you got to love your brother. Love your brother. Okay? Uh, if you can't do anything, love your brother first. Who's my brother? Right in here. Here's your brothers. This is brothers and sisters in here. Okay? This is what we're, this is the important thing. God says, uh, and uh, he wants us to look forward uh, to these people. Uh, are you your brother's keeper? Sure you are. That doesn't mean you, you, you put a thorn in your brother's just your brother's keeper. What's that? You, you want to look towards those things. You see a brother, uh, you see a brother in a fault, you go to them. You see things, you, 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 uh, you talk to them. You, you, you try and get them. Why? Because uh, we're, we're two or more get together. Uh, what's that? In, in the Lord's name. In the Lord's name. We can, we can do that now. That, that was what he said. If we can get together, we're in the Lord's name. What's that? He's now there. And that's what we want out of life. We don't need divisions. Okay? Um, now we'll get into verse number uh, chapter 4 here and to learn the difference between the spirit of truth and the spirit of error here. And uh, the Bible says in, cha in chapter 4, Beloved, beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits whether they are of God. Why is that? Because many false prophets are gone out into the world. Hereby we know ye the spirit of God. How's that? Every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is of God. And every spirit that confesseth not that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is not of God. This, and this is that spirit of Antichrist, whereof ye have heard that it should come. Now watch, and even now already is it in the world. Ye are of God, little children, and have overcome them, because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. They are of the world. Therefore speak they of the world, and the world heareth them. We are of God. He that knoweth God heareth us. He that is not of God heareth not us. Hereby we know, know we, the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. Now let's pray. Father, we thank you, Lord God, you've been kind to us. Uh, Lord, let us go through this part of uh, our, our, our book right here, our, our scripture right here, Lord God, with, with good confidence that thou wilt speak to us, Lord Father. And we thank you for it. We ask you, Lord, to, to, to just use your spirit throughout us, Lord, to get us up to here what we need today. We thank you. We love you in Jesus' name. Amen. So uh, uh, we got through all the chapters. We're now at the point where uh, we heard about brotherly love. Uh, and now we're going to see our outward piece of what we're hearing. And he says, beloved. You notice it's beloved. What's that? You're beloved. What, you've got to understand something. God loves you. Okay? He doesn't always like you, but he loves you. All right? I mean, I gotta, most of us, we love each other. We just don't like each other all the time. It's normal. Okay? Some things you just don't like. And he says, but he says here, he says, believe. Now, here's the commandment. Believe not every spirit. Okay? Believe not. Now, what's he talking about? Believe not. Now, notice there, it's a small s. Did everybody notice that? Small s. Okay? Believe not every spirit. So, obviously, when he does a small s, that's a spirit that's what? Either inside a man, or it's an evil spirit, or an unclean spirit, or something in that area. It's not God's spirit, right? When you see a capital S, that's God's spirit. Small s is a different spirit. It may be your spirit, or something in that area. Remember, it said about Jesus that he had, into thy hands I commend my spirit. It was a small s. Jesus Christ also had a spirit uh, in himself, okay? And he says, believe not every uh, spirit, okay? Uh, let's go over to 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 1. That's uh, to the left. 
If you get Romans, you went too far. Romans, then 1 Corinthians. First Corinthians chapter 1. He says, believe not every spirit. You're going to preach to today. Believe not every uh, spirit. Verse number uh, 17. For Christ sent me not to baptize. Not to do perform acts. Not to just put people in water. Uh, the main thing that he sent for was to what? Preach the gospel. That's what gets people saved, not water. It's the gospel. He says, preach the gospel. Uh, not with wisdom of words. You don't have to go conjure up your any new thing, he says. Lest the cross of Christ should be made of none effect. Why is that? Verse 18. For the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness. That's why. It's foolishness. But unto us which are saved... It's the power of God. It's the gospel that's the power of God unto salvation. Okay? He says, believe not every spirit. Why? Not everybody's preaching the right thing. Not everybody's going to say the right thing. Not everybody's going to go exactly, he's going to go by the scripture. Not everybody's going to take time to pray about it. Okay? Uh, he says, but try the spirits in verse number one. But try them. Uh, try the spirits. He's not talking about going out and trying booze. He's talking about try the spirits. Put them through a, a little bit. Listen for a little while. Try the reins of that of what he's saying. From the uh, mouth uh, and from the heart are the issues of life. He says whether they are of God. Listen to it. Is it of God? Why do you want to know that? Because many false prophets are gone into the world. And let's look at a spiritual look at this. Go to... Uh, First, we'll go to uh, Proverbs chapter 14. Middle of the, just past the middle of the book, Proverbs. Proverbs 14. And look down, uh, easy, make it verse 14, 15. This is the problem we have with false prophets. What that? The simple do what? They believe with every word. The simple believe with every word. But what? But the, look at the second part. But the prudent man looketh well to his going. Let's go back. Go to go to the book of uh, Job and and go to book uh, Job twenty six. Simple people believe things, and, and when people talk, uh, I don't know how many times I get people that come up to me, they start telling me things uh, uh, from the internet, and I'm just like all these goofy stories and everything, and I'm just like, okay, all right. Uh, I can't do anything about those things. Uh, I'm not really worried about them. Uh, Job 26. Kind of a, a book not many people go to. We uh, we went through this book. I actually went through it almost twice. And in Job uh, uh, 26, looking down at first number, uh, look at four. Look how it says it. To whom hast thou uttered words? And watch the last part. And whose spirit came from thee? Try the spirits. Whose spirit came from thee? What, what kind of spirit is it that's that's speaking to me? When you open up a book, look, I, I tell people, open up a book uh, and, and read it for a little bit. If you're going to read a book, whose spirit's in that book? What kind of spirit is in that book? Okay, I, I'll give you some of the books. Like uh, uh, one day I sat and some guy gave me this uh, book and I said, okay, I'll read it. Uh, uh, let me look at this. It was called The Book of Enoch. Anybody ever hear of that? The Book of Enoch? I just say, you know, you don't have to read it. It's stupid. I got inside the book, I started reading it, and it was talking, it was speaking of things. But I gotta tell you something, there was a different spirit in the book. And I could check, I could figure it out. It wasn't God's spirit in that book. So what did I do? I put it to the side, I don't want to read it anymore. Why? Because did you ever throw a lot of trash against the wall? There's always a little bit that sticks. You gotta watch for those things. There's a lot about history out there and stuff, but you have to watch sometimes what you're reading. It could be like 
reading something from Alistair Crowley or something like that just mess you up, make you, make you all, or go down to you. You want to be messed up, I'll tell you, go to Walmart. Here's, here's a great way to get messed up in your spiritual walk. Go down to Walmart and go to the inspirational section and read one of those books. Maybe you want to ruin your life with that kind of stuff. It's easy. And, and you'll notice everything. That, you ever pick up a Christian book and it, it's talking about, oh, you want to please God, be happy. Well, that'll please God. Me being happy will please God. And this is what they do. I mean, they tell you all of God's uh, universe and everything relies on your happiness. And that's what you're going to get out of those inspirational books. Be positive. Be positive. Don't let negative people around you. Let me tell you something. If you don't let negative people sometimes around, you don't hear anything negative. How are you going to know what's going wrong? <laughs> Amen. You, you won't look. If you're going to... Jesus Christ, very positive man. But you have to understand, when you're reading the Bible, is the Bible mostly positive or negative? It's negative. If you don't think so, come in for Jeremiah tonight. <laughs> If you don't think it's a, if you think it's all positive book, tonight I'll be preaching in Jeremiah, and Jeremiah is on the way. We're on the way out, and Jeremiah is sitting there with a with a ministry saying, "Come to the Lord, come to the Lord, come to the Lord." And you know what? He's the only one doing it. <laughs> He's got about three guys in the end. Amen. And uh, but it's also a book where uh, that's the worst you can get. That means what? I can go better. I don't need to do these things. And uh, although it's a hard book, man, I'll tell you what, you get a lot from it. Don't believe every spirit. Why is that? Because uh, you've got you, you to gotta try the spirit, okay, that's gone forth out of the man. And you do realize there's, there are spiritual things here. Uh, look at verse number 2, and he says, Hereby, chapter 4, verse number 2, Hereby know ye the Spirit of God. Everybody should start listening up. Why? He tells us that's how you want to know it. And he's going to explain. He put a colon there to know. Here's how we know the Spirit of God. Every spirit that confesseth that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is of God. Oh, this is pretty easy test. We can just listen for, for a little while. Why? Well, the ear tries words as a mouth tastes the meat. You want to look at the words that are coming out of the person. Uh, I pick it up really fast. What's that? Well, I want to see if he, he knows the gospel. You can hear it out of his mouth if he knows these things. Uh, you can tell what if, if you can tell if he's going for scripture or if he's not. Okay, does he say he come in the flesh? Uh, there's two parts of that. What's that? Jesus Christ came in his birth, right? And you know what else? He came up from the grave. He is come in the flesh, and when he stood before those guys up in that upper room, you know what? He was flesh, and he's flesh right now. He's got his spiritual body, that resurrected body. And I'm telling you the reason is because <coughs> don't be so surprised when somebody tries this one to you. Is Jesus come in the flesh and you say something like this? Well, I thought he came in the flesh. And the person turns around and goes, well, that isn't what the Bible says. You're of Antichrist. Why? Because it said that Jesus has come in the flesh. And the reason why he's stating that is because Jesus was resurrected and he has his flesh. He has come in the flesh and he's told you things. And those things that he told you keep going on just like him. Now, isn't that really easy, Miss Adrian? Don't let people deceive you. He's come in the flesh. Okay? And really what we're talking about is the doctrine of Christ. Go over to the next book, the next letter in 2 John. And right there in 2 John, it's uh, verse number 9. You probably just have to turn the page. Look at verse number 9. And here it says, Whosoever transgresseth and abideth not in the what? Doctrine of Christ hath not God. He that abideth in the doctrine of Christ, he hath both the Father and the Son. Okay? Verse 10. If there come any unto you and bring not this doctrine, it says receive him what? Not into your house. Neither bid him uh, God uh, speed, okay? Uh, what he's saying is, if, uh, if you can try the spirits, what's that? Do the spirits know? Does this guy know the doctrine of Christ? Go to another church and ask him, what's the doctrine of Christ? How, how do you think you get a fair? I've done it. I go up to, I've gone to people and, you know, the doctrine, what's the doctrine of Christ? Because I, you know, uh, I'm, I'm looking. 
and usually I'll find all kinds of things, and I'm like, that's not the doctrine of Christ. So I'll give you the doctrine of Christ. It's really easy. Amen? It's really easy, but most people don't even know it. It's three parts to the doctrine of Christ. Uh, first part, uh, 1 Timothy chapter 3. 1 Timothy chapter 3. Remember, this is a doctrine. Uh, this can't be changed. This is there. 1 Timothy chapter 3. The first thing you need to know for the doctrine of Christ, look at the last verse in 1 Timothy uh, chapter 3. Uh, this has been removed from all the modern versions, people. And this is who God is. Who Jesus Christ is. Look at verse number 16. And without controversy, we're not, you can't even fight about this. This is something that's there. Okay, this is the truth. Great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifest in the flesh. The Word became flesh, and, and guess what? It dwelt among us. Uh, who, is the, who was manifest in the flesh? Jesus Christ. Remember, Jesus is come in the flesh. He was manifest in the flesh. Jesus came here. And he was God. And he's God in the flesh. Who is he? That's who he is. He's God in the flesh. Amen? So we need to know who is he. <coughs> That's the first thing to the doctrine of Christ. What's the second thing for the doctrine of Christ? Well, you need to know his work. He has a work about him. What's that? Well, that's the gospel. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 3 and 4. You don't have to do it. I'm going to give it to you. For Christ died for our sins. Amen? Let's say, let's say 3 and 4. You guys should know this. If you don't, catch up with us. Okay? Uh, the gospel is that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures. He was buried. And on the third day, he rose again according to the scriptures. That's the gospel. What's the gospel? Oh, uh, I got the oh, it's Matthew to John. You mean you want me to read all the book? All that? To get this? No, it's just that Christ died for our sins. He was buried and on the third day he rose again. Amen? Very easy. It's the simple plan of salvation. Receive Christ. The work of Christ. He died on the cross for your sins. And then, what is the will of God? What is the work of God? The will of God? We have who He is. We know the His work, and now we know that we got to know like the duty. Go to Hebrews. Hebrews chapter 10. And that this will make it easy. 10-10. We're going to start in verse number uh, 10. And it goes to 18. Chapter 10, verse number 10. By, by the which will we are sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. And every priest, this is talking about the Old Testament, and every priest standeth daily ministering and offering oftentimes the same sacrifices which can never take away sins. Amen? Amen. Those priests didn't take away sin in that tabernacle. They just did a, did a, a sacrifice in there uh, for worship. Verse number 12, But this man, Jesus Christ, after he had offered one sacrifice for sins forever, sat down at the right hand of God. Those other priests, they, uh, they did a sacrifice, and when they got done, you know what they did? They walked over to the door and took the next sacrifice. Amen, Brother Larry? He had to keep standing there. Why? It's not enough, people. He can't sit down. There's no chairs in the tabernacle. There's no chairs in the temple. You don't sit down. It's continual work. Why? Because God's trying to show something to you. You can keep running around and sacrificing and running around and sacrificing. And you know what? You're still in your sin. And sooner or later, you're going to understand two things. I'm exceedingly sinful. Amen. And no matter what I do, I can't get out of it. And what did God say in, right after that? What does God say in Exodus? Meet me at the door. I'll, I'll do that one. <laughs> I, don't, I don't have enough animals at my house. <laughs> I'll just go meet him at the door. Amen. Why? Because he's the door. Uh, stay, in, um, stay there in Hebrews. 
He says, verse number uh, 13, from henceforth expecting till his enemies may make foot, his footstool. For by one offering he hath perfected forever them that are sanctified. They love God. Whereof the Holy Ghost also is a witness to us. For after that he had said before, this is the covenant that I will make with them, after uh, those days, saith the Lord, I will put my laws into their hearts, and in their minds will I write them, and their sins and their iniquities will I remember no more. Now, where remission of these is, there is no more offering for sin. What's that? Jesus, he died for our sins, and then guess what? It was enough, and he was just, he just sat down at the right hand of the Father. It's okay, it's with him now. All your sins are all paid for. Now what do you got? Just receive me. This is a simple plan, isn't it? I can't see why anybody wouldn't take this. You've got to be nuts not to take this. And there's the world out there. Ah! And the best thing, the best the, the, the world has come up to perfect themselves is they can a man can wear a dress or or do all these stupid things. That's the best we've come up with. I, I got I told this morning, I said, what's the best we came up with in church? Think about that. We've been two thousand years in the church. What we come up with a dress code. That's the best. We got all this stuff we've been doing for years, we got buildings and everything else. And everybody comes up with every, everything else. All you had to do was, what do you want for sacrifice prayer? He wants your heart and prayer, and he doesn't care about all these things. And here they come in, and you ain't hearing the right thing. That's the best we come up with. It's sad. We have no spiritual life to us anymore. We have a flicker of a, of a light that's in the church house, and, and really, we need to get that going. What's that through spiritual things? Go back to uh, uh, 1 John chapter 4. This is the doctrine of Christ. He, what's the will of God? He tells you, first off, what's the will of God? You get saved. And then what? Keep my commandments. Now it says, verse number uh, 3, And every spirit that confesseth not that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is not of God. That's why they do that to you. If people come up, but Jesus Christ come in the flesh? Oh, uh, yeah, I think he, he came. And they're just trying to play with you. You know the gospel. You got saved. Don't let people play with your mind. There's a, there's a big thing in, the, in churches. I'm going to show you one. This happened in, in my time. I saw it. Uh, and I saw it with my wife. We let you lead people to Christ. You take them into a, a church, and you know what? They talk them out of their salvation. We lead them to the Lord. That's great. What if you talked them out of their salvation, went in the world, and they just figured nothing? You know, they're saved, and they don't know anything anymore. And don't think this doesn't happen. I've seen more people chased out of churches, and you wouldn't imagine. And it all comes from standards. There's iniquity in the seat of judgment, man. Amen. And uh, he says, look, this, this one that says that Jesus isn't coming to the flesh, that's Antichrist. That's the spirit we're talking about. And let me tell you, it comes right away. It comes all the time, right away, uh, all together in your life. Look, uh, I'll give you uh, some of them. Uh, how about in Genesis? He just makes the garden, right? He makes the earth, he makes the garden, puts the man in the garden, gives him a wife. He's doing pretty good, isn't he? I mean, he's got a wife, everything else. God brought it to him. I mean, all he has to do is keep this garden and name some animals around here. And he goes off doing that. Don't eat that fruit over there, that one. You can eat everything else. Pick life. Don't pick that death fruit over there. Knowledge, because all that's going to do is puff you up and kill you, all that knowledge. And uh, he says to him, pick life, choose life, choose life. And what does Adam do? He pushes his wife over there. And guess who comes in the garden? Here comes the snake. Here comes the serpent in chapter 3. What happened? Well, he just got the garden done. Everything's looking up, isn't it? And here comes the old devil. Why? Well, you're not, you're, you're, you're unorganized. You're not, you don't have it all together. You're not, you're not, you're not settled. This is the biggest problem with Christians. You know why they're out of the church as soon as they get saved? They never get settled before the devil comes into their life or some spirit comes into their life. They're out. 
because they can't handle it. There's a reason for that. They're all dressed up and know where to go. They got the armor of God, but they don't know anything. Look, you want to get, look, it's as easy as this. I got the devil in my life. Put God in your life. He doesn't hang around. This is, this is not hard. I'm telling you that, look, I went to a church one time. I was sitting there, and this guy turns around. He goes, you want God in your life? You got the devil in your life, and you want the God in your life? He goes, come down here. And people were coming down. He's taking his hands. He's putting them on top of people, and he's saying weird things. The next thing you know, he goes, the devil's out of your life. I was like, he's probably more in their life now than ever. <laughs> Ceremonies don't work. I need an exorcist. No, no, you need God in your life. You think he's going to hang around? Look, I'll, I'll give you one. I, I, I had a guy say to me, I got a devil in my house. I said, put God in your house. Amen. Well, how do I put God in my house? Well, first of all, you, you get your self. That's number one. What's that? Well, i got to tell you something. I have a church right up the road. He just got saved a little while ago. Get in church. I'll help you out a little by, te- by preaching to you. Uh, that's the only way I can give you Christ. Amen? And then I told him, I said, if it's in your house and, and there, if you have leprosy in your house, there's a great way to deal with it. What's that? Get the sin out of your house first and then turn around and put on like a YouTube with the Word of God going all day. Just put it there. What do you think? The devil's hanging around going, oh, this is pretty good. I'm going to sit around and listen to the Word of God. What's the Bible say here? You get what I'm saying? This is not hard, is it? It's very easy. Get God into your life. You'll get the devil out of it. Amen. And it's not, and just so you know, it's not going to work like overnight. That's what they're trying to... You go home, you're all messed up more. That stuff doesn't work. You know what works? The same thing you learned in life. You want to be a, you want to be a carpenter, what do you do? You go learn it. You can't just walk up, Larry gave me a hammer. Hey, I got a nail. Boom, boom, boom. I'm the worst there is. And, but that's how people think. I just got saved. Now what? I'm Joe Pro Christian. There's Larry over there giving a guy a track. He's working for the salvation. Here you come with your great knowledge to tell somebody how to go. Oh, it's really easy. And you break up everything and the person wanders away. Why? Because you had to get involved. Somebody's witnessing somebody and you're there. I, I give it to you like this. I'll help you out. Shut up and pray. Your soul's in the balance. Amen. Pray for that soul to get saved. That God would work on that soul. That's what you want to do. What's this? The spirit of Antichrist. It comes in right after. Go to Acts chapter 5. Acts chapter 5. The church starts in Acts chapter 2, amen? Pentecost. They're doing great. I mean, they, they went out, they preached, they got all these converts, thousands of converts. In chapter 4, they were giving everything up to the Lord. Let's, let's spread the gospel. Let's give everything up and, and we'll just worry about the Lord. And they're, they're in one accord, it says. They were all in one accord, even to the point where when they prayed, it said that what? The room, it shook. The room started to shake when they were praying because they were uh, in one accord with the Lord. And you know what happens after that? Chapter 5. Everything's going great. Everything's going great. We're, we're loving the Lord. And uh, there was a certain man, a certain man. What's his name? Ananias with Sapphira, his wife. And they sold a possession and kept back part of the price. His wife also being privy. That's important. Privately they did this. They did this. And, and they, they brought a certain part of the money and, and laid it at the apostles' feet. But look at the third verse. This is where it happens. It's not about the money. It's about this third part. What's that? But Peter said, Ananias, why hath who? Satan filled thine heart to do what? To lie to the Holy Ghost and keep back apart. They said they were going to give it all and and, and like, you know, they came in with their offering that day. And uh, I, I did this when I was a kid. I used my mom give me 50 cents to go to church. And I used to come in. I used to give a quarter. Me and, me and God were in business together, baby. <laughs> what did I do? I kept back a part of the money, right, that I was supposed to give. I came home. You know what my mom asked me? Did you give all that money? Amen. 
Hey, Mom, I did. You know what I did? I lied to the Holy Ghost, didn't I? I'm glad I'm still here, huh? Yeah. <laughs> well, that's in the beginning. And if you ever noticed that in the very beginning of like when things change for the Lord and he calls out a new people, he'll 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 uh, he'll jump on it real fast in the very beginning. If you notice all the time, like in the book of Exodus, how he jumps in right away and stops some things. I mean, these people are going against the Lord. What happens? He opens the ground and swallows them. Uh, it's too early. If it happens now, you have to realize if it would have happened then and the church would have went into disarray back then, it would have been problems. It would have been some big problems. We see that in the book of Samuel as God actually is merciful to Saul. We don't see it because of how Saul is, but God's been being merciful to him. Think about it. The man ruled for 40 years. He's given him all that time to, to repent, and, and, and we're watching. It still doesn't happen. But uh, let's go back to... Um, Let's go back to 1 John. The devil comes in right away. Why? You're not stable enough yet. You're not ready enough yet. You know, he gives the, the great commission. And what happens? He tells you, watch out for these guys. Verse number uh, 4, he says, ye are what? You're of God. You're of God, little children. Yeah, the, he told you about the Antichrist. Yes, it's in the world. It's in the world right now. Okay, uh, he, you know you want to you want to look at the Bible in Second Corinthians chapter three and four. I, I'll give it to you. It says, "But if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost." Now watch the next verse. He says, "For the God of what this world? Who's the God of this world? Satan. What did he do? He hath blinded the minds of them which believe not." Amen? He's blinded them. What? This is what has gone on. He's given them something else to look at if you haven't seen it. Oh, here's the gospel. How many, how many people here have heard the gospel on TV this morning? How did you go? You didn't hear it? You can't hear it on TV. Uh, there may be some preacher on there, but he ain't giving out the gospel. He's giving out what he wants. He's telling you how to be a good boy and the, the country needs to revive. And we need to take it back. And it's not going to happen. You're wasting your time. What's the real thing that's happening? You're being diverted where? Away from the gospel. Uh, did you ever notice in the Bible there's nobody that's blind that gets healed in the Old Testament? No leper gets healed either. Why is that? Well, they're only the, you go down to the priest and you say, uh, I got a white spot on me. You know what the priest does? He diagnoses you and says, there it is. But he can't help you. He just say, what? Lock you up. Get out of here. Lock you up. That's all he can do for you. Then Christ comes in and he heals people. You know what he says? He says, don't, don't, don't tell anybody. Why wouldn't you tell everybody he got healed? Because miracles won't produce faith. Number one, faith cometh by hearing, hearing by the word of God, not by sight. That's you'll believe something else. You know what you'll do? You'll start believing on a guy uh, like some, I don't know, they, 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 they touch on. Oh, you start believing on him. I gotta get down to Benny Hinn. Why? He can hit you with his jacket. These people are crazy. They're insane. This is their solution. This is the best they come up with after all this time. A guy swinging a jacket around and hitting people. That's the best he come up. That's the best they come up with. I mean, this is insanity. If that's the case, man, I should have. Uh, please give me something. I'm gonna whack everybody. He says, "That's that's what." Now watch verse number four. Uh, down in uh, First John, he says, "Ye are of God, little children, and have what? Have overcome them, them of the world. You've overcome them." He says, "Why is that? Because greater is He that is in you than He that is in the world." Okay. Now, you ever hear somebody grab that verse and say, "Yeah, I can conquer the devil because greater is in in me than He that is in the world." <laughs> Uh, just so you know, anybody in here wants to take on the devil, please tell us beforehand so we can call you stupid. <laughs> Amen? He says, resist the devil and he shall leave you, right? He tells you to flee <laughs> this stuff. What are you sticking around for? Okay? It's like going to a, uh, to go into a brothel and, oh, God, well, I'm not with the girls. I'm sitting down in the, in the living room. You're still in a brothel. But that's the excuses that people will make. I'm okay, I'm down here. I went into the bar, I went in there to witness the people. I said, you You'll be at the belly up in a, in a little while. You'll be belly up. 
He says, little children, what's that? The, 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 everything's in the world. It, he, says, uh, he says, greater is he that is in you. What's that? Where are you drawing your power from? Okay? Well, I'm drawing the power from the uh, elements of the air. It's not going to work. Where are you drawing your power from? Well, how do you draw your power from God? Well, I just go like this. He puts an anointing on me and this happens. No, you better pray. Do you remember the dumb spirit that was in somebody and they couldn't get them out? It wasn't about, it wasn't about the person sick. It was about the person, for the disciples. What's that? They weren't keeping up with things. You want your spiritual power well, you better be prayer. You better keep with the Lord. That's the biggest thing, people. I do ask. I'm telling you, these everybody out there that thinks they got magic tricks, ask them how much they read their Bible. Ask them some Bible questions. I do. They don't even know a thing. When's hey? When's the tribulation? There's a good one. When's this happen? When's that happen? Give me the gospel. Leviathan. Tell me about Leviathan. Tell me all these things. You know what you're going to find? They don't know a thing. They're lying out there, but and you're. What do you think, God's sitting there going, oh, you don't know me, but you've got another gift. What's that? You've got magic tricks in the box over there. There's the Word of God, and then there's magic tricks. I'll take the Word of God. It's probably something that's written down. I can actually try it. I can't try the magic tricks over there. Try the spirits. If, if he wants to give a prophecy, make sure it's in the book. Amen. Try the prophet. Whoever's up there, try him with the prophets. I got a prophecy. Okay, turn to the prophets, people. Where is it at? Is it in Ezekiel? There's a lot of stuff in there. Is it, is it in Jeremiah? He's a prophet. Is it in Isaiah? He's a prophet. Did Jesus Christ say it? He's a prophet. Amen? There's where you look. What is going on here? Uh, uh, oh, uh, the lady's going to have a boy and you didn't go in or whatever? Uh, that isn't in the book. What's going on here? Believe people don't think this doesn't happen. It happens in their ceremonies. My problem is that if they're wrong, do you take them outside and kill them like the Bible says? Makes you think. Or maybe this one will happen. Somebody gives a prophecy and they're wrong, maybe we should all have a time of getting up and laughing at them for a while. These dumb things that aren't in the book. Okay, uh, verse number uh, 5. Verse number 5 says, they, who's they? The two spirits he's been talking about. They are of the world. Why is that? Therefore speak they of the world. And the world heareth them. Uh, Jesus told them in the upper room, he said, you're not, you're not of the world. I don't pray for the world. How many of you think that's a great idea? Let's pray for the government. Uh, you're your time. Now think about it. Who cares you know, look, now think about that. I pray for them, I'm going to pray for the government. Uh, Jesus said he's building a what? A church. Did he say he was building a government? Did he say that America was the government? You know, he could just go like this, that's it, it's time. What do you think, he's going to sit here and take this the whole time? We got the worst haters of God in the, in, around now? They're taking children to other places. This is a great place to be, you know, I like this. You don't realize we're Sodom and Gomorrah of the future. And it's almost time. God cannot sit by. You've got to understand something. He has to judge this stuff. You can't expect him not to. Love not the world. They're of the world. Those people out there. And the world hears them. Uh, when's the last time you heard them get, a, uh, get up a guy like, okay, we got a, we got... We want to get the gospel out. Uh, do you realize that you never hear that on TV on the government or anything? You know, even when they got Billy Graham up there, you know what? He, he spoke a lot of politics up there when they got a hold of him. When they got a hold of Billy Sunday, you ever hear of Billy Sunday? They got a few clips of him. The worst thing about it is this guy preached. A lot of people got saved, but the clips that they, got, they kept and they put on YouTube is all about drinking. Wasted time. Verse number 6, he says what? They're of the world. They speak of the things of the world. Look, look at them and you'll hear about the world. What's that? We are of God. 
He that knoweth God heareth us. If somebody say they'll hear you, they'll hear you uh, if they want to hear you. He that is not of God heareth not us. And he says, Hereby know we the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. Get that book out and you can figure it out. Let me tell you something. There's a little bit even more of that. You've got common sense and you've got a conscience inside of you. And most of you in here, and actually everybody in here, is over about 30 years old, right? Okay, you can't figure out when a man's lying to you. Think about that. Just take the book out and find out what? Is it error or is it truth? You know what God's getting to? Now you know you, you have that anointing on you. You know you have an unction from God. You know you have inspiration in you. You know you have scriptures. What's that? Don't be deceived. Don't be deceived. Go to the book. Amen? He's been pushing you this and pushing you this. Now do you see where John's going? You're a new man. You've got to think like a new man. How does the new man think? Well, he doesn't think about the world. He thinks about the things of God, this new man. And how do you know if you're listening to an old man? He's telling you the things of the world. I, I can give it to you this way. Watch out for storytellers. I go to, I go to churches and I'll sit there. Guy got a 45-minute sermon and, and uh, 45, 44 minutes is his stories. I'd rather have scripture. I don't need that stuff. Hereby we know what? The spirit of truth from the spirit of error. I, I, I've been loving this situation. We're going on and we were, we're up to the point of knowing what is being, what spirit is being put to us now. And now we'll go on and we're going to learn something else. We're going to learn the love of God next week. Amen? Amen. And it's going to confound, it will confound the world because they have no idea what love is. Amen. All right, let's pray. Our Father, thank you, Lord God, for our time here. I thank you, Lord, for preaching to us today and talking about the things of the Lord. Thank you, Lord, for uh, having a teacher to teach it very simple to us, Lord Father, that we may understand it and be made, made plain to us, Lord God. Thank you, Lord, for showing us that uh, it's a simple thing and we need to grasp simple things, Lord Father of the Lord. Not the simple things of the world, but the simple things of the Lord. Thank you, Lord. You've been good to us in our spiritual growth, and we love you for it, and we love you for Christ dying on the cross for us. If any man's not saved, today is your day. Uh, you just need to come to Christ, saving Christ as your Savior. Lord, I'm a sinner. I receive you as a Savior. That's eternal life through Jesus Christ. And then after you're saved, the, the right book is the Word of God, which we commonly prefer as the King James Bible. Father, thank you again for being good to us and loving us. We love you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen.